Welcome back into the ASUG News Studio. My name is Tom Welcome from ASUGnews.com. Well, we are delighted to have Irfan Khan in the studio today to discuss all things HANA. Welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. This is uh, a very HANA-centric event. There's uh, so much going on. I know your schedule is packed. Uh, before we dive into that, can you just talk a little bit about your, your past? And I know you came over from Sybase and what you're doing now at SAP. Sure. Thank you. Uh, my, ba my background really is that I joined Sybase uh, shortly after leaving university, spent 20 years at Sybase, mm -hmm. worked on a variety of uh, product lines and, and, and uh, engineering pursuits in the company, became chief technology officer globally for Sybase in 2008, transitioned into SAP uh, actually last year and taken on a dual role. So I have the role of heading up solution management okay. for all things database and data warehousing, mm -hmm. and also I serve as the chief technology officer for the SAP database and technology business as well. Wow, so you are a busy man. But, it, but it's, always a good, it's always good to be in demand as well. Yeah. Well, let's, let's jump right off into there. Um, you know, with HANA today, and you know, we're hearing a lot, and actually I've heard some really interesting things about talking about, you know, more explanation from SAP about who HANA is really for these days. Um, can you just talk a little bit about, you know, what is that kind of ideal HANA customer? Because they may be sitting out there thinking, I, I'm interested in HANA, but you know, I don't know, and maybe, you know, are there customers that really aren't right for that right today? Because we heard Hospital say somewhat about that last week on the Enterprise Cloud announcement. Maybe it's not for someone. So maybe we could just talk who is it for and maybe who's it sure. not for right it's now. It's a great question. So first and foremost, I mean, HANA is at the core a database. Mm -hmm. So frankly, who doesn't need a database? <laughs> Everybody needs a database. The question really comes about is the databases that are presently in existence, and perhaps this is a little bit tangential response to make to your question, mm -hmm. but I'll make sure that, well, at least I would like to make sure that this is uh, well understood. Mm -hmm. I mean, SAP, for the, the most part, 40 years, of course, being in the business application space, spent a substantial amount of its time supporting many open database environments, and of course, we will continue to do so. Sure. But where HANA really differs is it's been driven ground zero up with innovation in mind. Mm -hmm. It's not cluttered with technology debt, which the majority of the, of the traditional vendors today, at least anyway, mm -hmm. have unfortunately had to carry for many, many years, many generations, in fact, of mm -hmm. IT. So where HANA really comes about is purely because of the innovation that it's driving, exploiting the middleware, the technologies that are available to it today, middleware implying, of course, application business logic, mm -hmm. being able to run that directly within HANA, and also in terms of the user base and population that could benefit from it, anybody that has the need for real time, the ability to simplify their architectures will be a prime candidate for SAP HANA. Mm -hmm. Simplification is something Vishal's talked a lot about. Um, is there some steps to get to that simplification. It seems like there, you know, we've heard about innovation without disruption. Um, maybe some customers are a little cynical about that, but what, you know, what do you say to those customers who come back to you? I'm sure maybe you get the question. You know, what do you guys say to them when, when I'm sure the simplification pitch is very attractive. So how do you say, well, here's how we'll get you here? Yeah. So if, firstly, simplification doesn't necessarily mean elimination. Mm -hmm. Simplification means that you still need to have these defined business functions that are running, whether they're analytical functions or predictive type right. of functions in your business. So simplification implies that you're consolidating a lot of that type of workload okay. or those user profiles into one single form factor, which happens to be SAP HANA. Mm -hmm. Now, some of the cynical comments that sometimes come along are in line with, it's almost like trying to change the car tire whilst the car is still moving, mm -hmm. because people want to run their businesses, of right. course they want to innovate those businesses, so how do you achieve both goals? Right. This is precisely where SAP has, has made a substantial kind of investment in terms of bringing about change in a non-disruptive way by having architectures like a sidecar type of an architecture. Mm -hmm where for instance, BW is a glowing example of that. Right. Business warehouse running on top of HANA as a sidecar to an existing ERP instance running on a traditional database. That essentially means that you could have infrastructure in situ, but of course take the accelerative benefits of BW, whether it's BW or even some of the other accelerators, immediately. Right. So the, the reality is that we're introducing different deployment frameworks or architectures mm -hmm. to be able to achieve that. And having replication type of technology to, to do the constant loading, the perpetual loading, is just, just but one of the investments that we're making. Right. Do you, you know, the, the sense I get from ASUG members I talk to is they, they see the vision. I mean, they can clearly see it. Um, but, you know, for some of them, perhaps it's getting over that, um, well, we've got our Oracle or DB2 or SQL databases running, you know, about where we want. So what do you, you know, that's obviously taking kind of a short-term view. How do you guys get them to think more long term about, okay, yeah, maybe you're okay now, but you're not doing this, or I, how does that conversation go? I'd love to hear that. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting question, right? So most people, it's, we've, 
we've taken a look at the market, we've taken a look at the, the incumbents in the market that have been around for many years, and they typically are positioning the same old stuff but in a slightly different packaging, right? Mm -hmm. So essentially by adding additional turbocharging because of some of the hardware innovations. Okay. But at the root cause is still inefficiency. Inefficiency, and I'll come back to my point a moment that I made a moment ago about the technology debt. If you're carrying something which is just substantially uh, heavier than mm -hmm. it ought to be for a particular function, then you're going to have to be following through with whatever the level of innovation is based upon that. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, if we look at the, the, the current state of the IT industry, more importantly, look at our customers' environments. They have a very heterogeneous environment. They've made substantial investments in lots of third-party technologies. We're not suggesting at any point in time that they should eliminate that or purge out the existence of those technologies. Right. We have to be open, but really where the emergency opportunity comes in, I say emergency because there's so many overwhelming factors in business today things that are compromising their ability to be able to see profitability mm -hmm. in their, you know, whatever pursuits they're taking on right now. Being able to minimize the amount of disruption to their, to their workforce whilst they go through perhaps mergers and acquisitions. Sure. There's a variety of different use cases and if you continue to use the traditional approaches, you need to be able to look at the next generation of technology, the next generation of opportunity as almost as an asset, not as a liability. Most customers view change as almost as something which is necessary, but how do you factor in those changes? Right. And I think, with, with, at least with HANA's positioning and of course as SAP's positioning, our intent is to utilize HANA as a transformative part to your businesses. Not just a yet another technology, be it exotic or even you know, mainstream, that right. you should just take on because we want you to take it on. There is a right. genuine reason behind this. Great answer, I like that point. Do you think, you know, at the outset in 2011, 2012, we heard a lot about speed, speeds and feeds. I mean, I think that's been, um, you know, that was kind of the initial thing. It seems like you guys have moved on from that a little bit to more of the business value. Can you talk about, I mean, certainly the speeds are amazing when Vishal gets up there and gives these, you know, the 10,000x club. But I'm wondering if you need to go beyond that now and say, okay, look it, that you're going to get cra you know, crazy increases in speeds. Our customers are saying, well, what else? What else am I going to get when I do this? Look, this is a very good question. And frankly, I would probably be... Uh, in entire agreement with you when you say that for the last 18 months. SAP has done a fantastic job at launching a brand new product, mm -hmm. being completely driven by innovation, and of course set the market alight in terms of what we're trying to achieve here. Mm -hmm. Yes, there has been a fair amount of evangelism within the market in terms of describing it as a phenomenally fast runtime environment, a real-time runtime environment. And some of those speeds and feed things that we talk about, they're material so people can get a, a, almost a parallel to be able right. to compare it against. Because if you don't, then you know, it's almost like saying, I've been to the moon, right? But the reality right. is that I actually went to, I don't know, I went to Europe, okay, right? right. It's a bit of a strange analogy, right? But yeah. it's one's reaching for the stars, the other is essentially making as far as a, attempt as I could go. Mm -hmm. The attempt really from SAP's point of view is to make those changes in our customers' landscapes in a way that they're able to adopt them simply in a simplified way. Okay. And the majority of things that we've been focusing on right now from a business value perspective come about now in this current form factor that we have. In SAP HANA, sweet on HANA, of course, is that disruptive opportunity to mm -hmm. refresh customer landscapes. The most important thing that I would highlight from HANA is the ability to be able to do analytics on live data. Mm -hmm. This is one of those big, big challenges that many customers have been trying to address using right. a variety of technologies. HANA makes that reality possibility today. What are you hearing from this show? I mean, two years later, I would be hesitant to find someone here who has not heard about HANA. What are the types of questions you're getting now from, from I know it's a hard to generalize that because I'm sure you get a lot of questions, but you know, what's the kind of the thrust of the customer questions right now? I mean, the spectrum of questions typically start from where do I get, how do I get going on HANA? Mm -hmm. Is it a uh, learning curve that I need to be aware of? Because is it something extraordinarily different to what I've essentially been running in my landscape? Right. Is it a database? Is it a database of some exotic mm -hmm. uh, sort of form factor that I have to then get acquainted to? So the knowledge part, the acquisition of mm -hmm. technology knowledge is one part. Mm -hmm. The second part really is then, how do I prove to my business that HANA is a, is a replacement, an alternative, and a viable option that I should be considering now. Mm -hmm. So that's the second kind of area. The third area really is that if we take a look at the business transformative capabilities of SAP HANA, how do I, when do I actually be, when am I able to measure those? I mean, is it day one? Is it three years from now? Is mm -hmm. it two years from now? Now, across the spectrum of those questions, okay, there is one compelling response. HANA is today, mm -hmm. HANA is innovative, and of course, in terms of what your businesses are able to do with it today, you only have to compare yourself with the peer group that you're in. You know, we've had more than a thousand plus deals in terms of SAP HANA that have gone along, gone along in the last uh, 18, 24 months. Mm -hmm. 
So that tells you that a thousand plus people are now seeing a compelling reason to look at HANA. Right. And these are not small companies. These are the multi-conglomerates, okay, right, that SAP has been affiliated with for many years. Mm -hmm. So I would look and I would encourage people to take a look at these success stories, these testimonies. And then if we look at the way that HANA is being adopted, many customers start off small, they perhaps take a look at it for even non-SAP data. This is another key area. Right. And then looking to experiment with that data and then expanding that in terms of the, the general use of technology in, in the organization. Mm -hmm. You mentioned small customers and uh, it's interesting, you know, maybe they just don't have the resources, but you, know, you guys have the you know, AWS cloud and you know, you're trying to get that. How has that been? Has that been a great way for you guys to get the word out about that when people don't have to make a huge commitment? Obviously, you just pay the hourly fees and all that. Sure. Has that been the uptake that you guys have wanted? Well, first and foremost, it comes back to my first, my first uh, you know, element of, of the spectrum of questions that mm -hmm. get asked in terms of the skill set, the, yeah. the, the reusing of skill set. Well, it means that developers and administrators can have immediate access to being able to, as practitioners, be able to look and feel what SAP HANA looks like in their organization. Now, of course, it's in a hosted environment, which means you can push data into the, into the cloud if you so choose to do so, but the intent really is, is for people to get familiarized with the platform, mm -hmm. first and foremost. Now, I, I view the, the, uh, the Amazon opportunity for many developers who really want to have a, a sandbox to play in as an immediate opportunity. We have, of course, the SAP HANA Academy, yep. and if you use the Academy in concert with the actual uh, ability to play with HANA within the cloud, Amazon Cloud, it gives you an immediate opportunity to actually get familiarized with the technology. Right. And you know, um, we talk a lot about customers and Vishal has gotten up there and said, you know, customers let your imaginations run wild, but you know, you're bringing up an interesting point about developers getting in there and startups. We had just had the startup forum back in Cambridge a couple weeks ago. Um, do you see that as a, a going to be a huge contributor to the growth of HANA, the developers and the startups getting Absolutely. in there? Absolutely. I mean, developers, I mean, gone are the days where decisions were taken at the board level and technologists were merely the, uh, the recipients of the downstream instructions. Right. Now there's this surge, it was almost like the, the crusade starts from the, from the rank and file developer and from the analyst or from the, you know, from the, from the developer community mm -hmm. and it influences the board, the board level now. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, look, there's three prevailing data trends that I will call out in each and every one of these situations. Number one is everybody wants to encourage more experimentation of data. Well, who's going to experiment with data? Right. The developers, the analysts. Mm -hmm. If we take a look at the next big trend, okay, right, which is making data transparent, everybody wants availability of that data. And then thirdly, what you want to do is be able to use much more of an algorithmic approach to decision making. Developers are front and center to every one of those three trends. Mm -hmm. They're going to be the ones who are going to transparently allow access, the administrators, et cetera. They're going to be the ones who are going to do the experimentation on data, and they're absolutely going to be the ones that develop these you know, new next generation algorithms to exploit the data and the runtime. Great, well that's a great place to stop that. Really appreciate you coming by. This has My been pleasure. very helpful for me and I know for our members as well. My pleasure. Stay tuned on asugnews.com for more interviews with ASUG members and SAP newsmakers. And uh, we'll be back in about uh, 15 minutes with another great interview. Thank you for watching.